What's up YouTube? Today I'm going to show you how to build a basic Super Smash Bros style game in Fortnite. For those that don't know, Super Smash Bros is one of the biggest brawler type games out there. Oh, you got Smash Bros? Yeah, I love Nintendo. And now I'm going to show you how to recreate this game within Fortnite Creative. The first thing we're going to work on is our level layout. I'm just going to make an extremely basic design here for our level. I began by grabbing floor tiles to use as the platform for where the fight takes place. I started off using standard square tiles, but then later switched to these half tiles to use instead. Remember, in your game you can use whatever tile you want as the floor. The second part is setting up your camera angle. You will need two devices for this the control third person device and the camera fixed point device. First, you're gonna put the control third person device down. You do not need to change any settings in here for this tutorial as well. You're gonna to wanna to place this device with its pointer light pointing at your platforms kinda of like this. This looks like good positioning, but it's a little further out than I would like it to be. So I'm going to delete some of the floor tiles, make the level a little smaller, and play with some different camera angles until I get what I think looks best. You're going to need to place a spawner device so that you can spawn properly into the map on the platform. These are the half tiles that I found to be better suited for the level as in Super Smash Bros there isn't a whole lot of room to go towards or away from the camera. It's more of like a 2D side scroller style game. You can set your game up to be not so much of a side scroller if you want to give it a more 3D feel to it, but for this tutorial, we're going to use this tile. When you like your platform set up with the camera angles, it's time to move on to adding the barriers. Grab the barrier device and place it on the side of the platforms. Edit the device and change the depth to 100 and the height to say 50. Align it as best as possible so that it's right along the edge of the platform so that a player can't jump off from the front and the back of the platform. Once your barriers are in place, we are going to want to set up the damage volume device down by the lava. You will need to adjust the zone width and the depth accordingly with your map and change the damage type to elimination. Now you can see when a player falls or gets knocked off the platform they will be eliminated. Next we are going to update some of the game settings. Change the max players to however many players you want in your game. Now in the settings tab I like to upgrade the max amount of health that a player can have as I feel 100 is too low for this game. In my game, I'm going to change allow building to none. If you want building in your game, you can certainly add it. Building can destroy the environment to no, environment damage to off, structure damage to none, weapon destruction to none, pickaxe destruction to none, in the UI tab, display overview map to no, and change the show resource counts to no. We will be changing more settings going forward as we go through and test the game out. The next thing we are going to do is get rid of the minimap in the corner that displays during the game. To do this you will need a HUD controller device. Place the device down anywhere, then in the settings change show minimap to no. Now you can see that the minimap is no longer displayed and it looks a little better visually. Now, we want to limit the amount of lives a player has, so we want to display how many times they have died during the match. To do this, we will need to use the tracker device. Once you place the tracker device down and enter the settings, this is what you need to change. The stat to track is eliminated. The target value changed to 3, or however many lives you want in your game. You can change the tracker title to say number of deaths, give it a description to let the players know that once you die three times then you're out of the game. You want self eliminations to count as well so change this to yes 
You can change the quest icon as well to something more relative like a heart and change its color to red. You can test out your game to ensure the tracker is working correctly. Now, we will have to go back to the game settings and change the number of respawns to 3 so that it matches the number of deaths until you are eliminated from the match. Now, when you test this, you will see that once a player dies 3 times, the match is over. Next, we are going to add more player spawners to the platform because we don't want everybody spawning in the same spot. And now, we have the most time-consuming part of the game, which would be the melee designer device for custom swords and hammers. In this video, I'm just going to use swords as there's a lot of different settings here. So we're just going to make three types of swords, a common sword, a rare sword, and a legendary sword. The settings you will change with the different weapon levels are basic attack damage, but more importantly is the knockback players setting. This setting will give it the most Super Smash Bros style fighting feel as you are used to players flying out of the map when they are hit. I'm not going to go into this in too much detail, but you are going to want to change the basic attack, charge attack, jump attack, sprint attack, and any of the 5 attack combo multipliers. For the next part, I'm going to move the melee device off of the platform somewhere out of the way before this area is too crowded with devices. From here, we're going to make our other swords with different rarities and stronger attacks. Once you have completed that, then we'll open up an item spawner device to place the weapons in that we just made. The best practice is to put more of the common swords into the spawner device and less of the legendary swords to make it a little more balanced. You can also add in other weapons and consumables to make the game a little bit more interesting. You'll want to adjust the settings accordingly so that the items spawn after a certain amount of time. Once you have everything into the item spawner, you can place them onto the platform wherever you think it'll fit best for the items to spawn. Now, let's bring our dummy player in to do some multiplayer testing. As you can see, I've brought in my other account, Cheddar Gaming one You can see that the charge attack with the blue weapon is giving a good amount of knockback. You'll probably go back and forth with the melee device settings and play around with the melee attack knockback settings to make it feel right. There is another setting we need to change in the game settings. As you can see, our game did not finish even when the last player was eliminated three times. In the game settings, go to last standing wins the game and turn this to on. Then in your next test, you should see that once the opponent is eliminated three times, the match will end automatically. Now for some more changes to the settings, in the game settings you can change the elimination score to say 100, so that a player gets a 100 score for eliminating a player. Now at the end of the last match, you can see health was a column at the end screen, so let's fix that. In the UI settings, under round win condition, change this to score. Tiebreakers you can set to eliminations and eliminated and then in the score section you can add the same as tiebreakers. And there you have it. You now have a functioning Super Smash Bros style game that you can customize further. Feel free to let me know, tag me, show, show me some videos of what you guys have created from this. I'd love to see what you guys make. If you have any questions feel free to drop a comment. Like and subscribe is always appreciated. I'm out. Peace.